Hey everyone, I'm Jason from DIY Guys. Uh, I make a lot of videos about DIY stuff on S2000. I also work on S2000s in my spare time, which is what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to be installing rigid collars on this really nice, clean S2000. And yeah, enjoy it. If you follow my channel, you probably already follow his channel. But if you don't, you should. He does really great informative installs. And um, like he said, we're gonna do the rigid collars on my S2000 today. It's something I've been putting off for a long time. And maybe if we're lucky, he'll let me tour his, uh, his track spec CR after this. So stay tuned and let's get it. Okay, so I'm not gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about when it comes to installing spoon rigid collars. Jason pretty much did the whole install from start to finish while I pestered him with nonstop questions. So instead of doing a detailed breakdown, I'd like to point out some key moments to help your install go as smooth as mine did. For a very detailed, thorough breakdown of this install, be sure to check out Jason's channel, DIY Guys, link below. First off, you're going to want to jack up the car on a nice flat surface. Trying to do this on any type of slope will make it much more difficult. Next, you're going to remove the wheels to get easier access to the front subframe bolts. Considering that we'll be dropping the front subframe about an inch or so, we'll begin by marking the position of the steering rack with a marker and then disconnecting it from the steering rack coupler. Then, depending on your intake setup, it's a good idea to disconnect your intake from the manifold. Dropping the subframe an inch or so also means that your engine will drop the same distance, and you want to avoid causing unnecessary stress or damage on the steering and intake components. Next, you'll brace the subframe with the jack and a 2x4. Once the subframe is supported, you can begin backing out the subframe bolts starting with the middle two. There are six bolts in total, but the middle two won't be used to hold the subframe up while installing the rigid collars, and for that reason, you can remove them completely. The front and rear bolts will get backed out an inch or so, and then you can slowly lower the jack so that the subframe sits on the four backed out bolts. Honda purposely made these bolts super long so that you don't have to completely drop the subframe to do a clutch job. Now it's time to insert the rigid collars into place. Starting with the middle section with the bolts removed, use the supplied copper grease and apply it to both sides of the rigid collar. The wider side of the rigid collar will always face downwards. If you make the mistake of flipping the wider side facing up, you'll damage the collar while trying to tighten everything back up. Right here, you might have noticed that we had one of the collars upside down. Luckily, Jason caught it, flipped it around before tightening anything down. It's also important to mention that there are two different sized collars in the kit. Be sure to reference the spoon diagram to make sure you're using the proper ones for each section. For the remaining bolts in the front subframe, you'll go one by one, backing out one bolt at a time, being sure to apply copper grease to the collar and the bolt before threading it back into place. It's important to take your time, making sure you're using the right collar in the right position and hand thread before using power tools. The last thing you want to do is strip the threads in the frame or break a bolt. Once the rigid collars are in place, incrementally tighten each bolt a few millimeters at a time so that the subframe evenly raises up. If you tighten one side too far before working on the other side, the subframe will not want to sit properly, you'll feel resistance and risk damaging the bolts and the collars. Once everything's torqued to spec, you can reconnect your steering coupler and your intake before moving on to the rear subframe. For the rear, right off the bat, you'll notice you'll have to disconnect your exhaust from the hangers to get access to the rear subframe bolts. You'll also have to remove the rear strakes. Just like the front, the rear subframe also has six bolts. Start by supporting the rear diff with your jack. Once the rear diff is supported, you'll have to remove the middle and rear bolts just like you did in the front subframe. These are too short to catch the thread while lowered, so they have to be removed completely. Then you'll back out the front bolts about an inch. Now you can very slowly lower the jack, but not completely, just enough to get level with the front bolts. Starting with the rear and middle bolts, take the appropriate size rigid collar, add copper grease, and set them in place with the wider side facing downward. You can then move on to the front bolt, going one bolt at a time, backing out the bolt completely, inserting the copper grease rigid collar followed by hand tightening the copper greased bolt back into place. Repeat on the other side and then raise the diff slightly using the jack so that the middle and rear bolts can now be threaded. Once all the bolts are threaded without any resistance, you can tighten the rest of the way and torque to spec. Just like the front, you want to do this incrementally so this rear subframe raises evenly. Thank you. 
double check your work, get your side strakes and muffler back on, and the last step in this install is to hit that subscribe button below. If you don't, this install will take you eight hours instead of three, and then your girl will leave you, and you don't want that to happen, so definitely subscribe. Now I know I made this process sound simple enough, but if you're planning on doing this yourself, I highly recommend checking out the detailed version on Jason's channel, DIY Guys, linked below. It'll be fine for me. Much quieter than the Gretti exhaust I had prior to this. Oh, the SE? Uh, dual? Yes, the SE dual. I think drones like crazy. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Oh, a little clutch buzz, or maybe that's no, the shifter. No, that's the shifter, yeah. Okay. That's, that's exactly what that is. Yeah. So this is 0405, huh? 0405, yep. Yeah, it's in good shape. Thanks, man. I got it with 49,000 miles. I bought it on Bring a Trailer, actually. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. Sight unseen. The short shifter is cool, but there's almost something nice about having the, some amount of uh, engagement. Yeah, yeah. It feels very mechanical, right? Yeah. No, I mean, the feel is, like, incredible. Yeah. For sure. No play in neutral either. It's just kind of like, yeah. you have to actually put some force into it, like, to get it to move. Oh, I need my two steering rack. Okay, so Jason is cool enough to let me drive his totally track spec Honda S2000 CR, baby. This is awesome, man. I've never got to sit in a CR before. Dude, I can't believe I'm in a CR right now. It's like a unicorn car, but for me, I'm like so over it. I know, you got dust all over the inside. Look at this man. This man treats his CR like dog doo doo. This is dope. He's got some AEM gauges down there. Very low. Like, it's probably button with all dust. That's wild. Hey, that's that starter noise. Yeah. Is that worth fixing? Cause mine does that too. Uh, people say it just comes back. So. It's inevitable in some ways. Wow, stock shifter. I forgot what this well, felt like. It has the uh, springs, so. Okay. It's not totally stock, but. Wow, it just feels so weird to sit this low. Yeah, it must be so different. Yeah. One thing you're gonna like is the tune. Okay. Yeah, just rip it. Full throttle. <laughs> Holy freaking crap, dude. Jesus Christ. Dude, yeah. this is fucking getting me so stoked. by how good the car feels like it just yeah it feels so like smooth and dialed in it's it wants you to tune out all like the race car noises it's like whoa it's like what's what is that the tune just smooths it out yeah man and you can't do that with the 0405 right because of some stupid ecu thing yeah you know that never gets old. I know it's cringy to say, but hitting VTEC never gets old, man. I have so much fun driving this car. So I'm currently on Skyline. Uh, I'm driving back from, from Alice's back to my house and this little toge area, I thought would be a great I thought it would be a great 
road to test out the spoon rigid collars. And uh, you know, that being said, before we go any further, shout out DIY Guys, AKA DIY Guys TV on Instagram, AKA Jason in real life. He is a true S2000 nerd. And if you need any work done on your car, on your S2000 and you're local to the Bay Area, hit him up on Instagram and I'm sure he'll help you out. That guy really knows what he's doing. He's been, he's dedicated a lot of years to uh, his S2000 and S2000 content. And um, you know, he really knows what he's talking about. Okay, so moving on to the rigid collars. So I'm on Skyline, like I said, this road has a lot of turns, a lot of straights, a lot of bumps, potholes, everything. It's not perfect. This road is not perfect by any means, but I thought it would be perfect to test out the rigid collars. And, you know, I'm trying to be unbiased in this review. You know, a lot of times you'll do a modification and you kind of get hyped on it and you feel things that maybe were already there or aren't really there. But I have to say, after daily driving it for, uh, you know, on freeway and cruising around and now hitting the toge area, there's definitely less noise in the car, especially at highway speeds. And there's definitely less vibration in the car in general. You know, my goal for this car is that in like 10, 15 years, I'm gonna be able to teach my daughter how to drive a manual in this car. And by then I'm hoping to have done enough suspension upgrades, modifications, and just overall refinement to where this car doesn't feel like a 30 year old Honda, you know, in 10 years. Now, of course, it's not gonna feel like a brand new 911 or anything like that, but you know, oh Jesus Christ, so bright. As long as I can kind of refine it over time, I'll be really happy with it. So for those reasons, I feel like this is a great mod. I almost don't even feel like it's a mod. I feel like this is this is something that every S1000 owner should consider as a maintenance item. Essentially, it's almost like a bushing, you know? The, the, the rigid collars are almost like act as a bushing. It's a pliable metal, so it's technically a one-time use product. So the once you torque everything up, the rigid collars actually crush a little bit and they kind of fill that gap in between your frame and your subframe. So for those reasons, I think it's a great mod and um, I recommend it. Just make sure that you know what you're doing because as you saw earlier in the video, it is a little tricky. It's a tricky install. Overall, I'm very happy with the rigid collars. I feel like they made the car feel more refined and that's exactly what I'm trying to do in terms of drive, drive train modifications moving forward. That being said, as I'm filming this video, uh, I realized that I hit a thousand subscribers <laughs> and uh, it's so cool to me that there's a thousand people out there that appreciate the content that I'm creating. That's like a really uh, humbling and cool experience. And I'm a man of my word. We're giving away a Mugen part now that we hit a thousand subs. And I'm still trying to decide what that part is gonna be, but I'm gonna announce it in the next video. And uh, it's again, it's my way of uh, showing appreciation to the early subscribers. Humbling experience, you guys are dope. And uh, I will catch you in the next video. We got a lot of modifications coming, so stay tuned. Until next time, peace out, take care.